Today, we are doing APRS on a Windows computer running the Pinpoint APRS software. We'll be using the Vero VGC VRN76 radio. Join me. First thing to do is uh, pair the radio to the uh, computer. Do that by, uh, well, I'm uh, doing the start menu and I'll just type in Bluetooth and that will uh, get me to the settings for Bluetooth. So we need to pair the uh, computer with the uh, radio. The way to do this is uh, we go into the menu on uh, the radio, general settings, connection, and we turn on pairing, as you can see there, like so. And then we ask the Windows computer to add a device. Uh, select the topmost uh, one that just says Bluetooth, and it's gonna start scanning, and hopefully we'll find our device. There we are, VRN76. Click on it. It says uh, connecting, and it's connected. What this will do is we'll, it will create a couple of uh, serial ports um, on your computer, and you need to connect to one of these serial ports from uh, Pinpoint APRS. Sadly, the way Windows is uh, set up for uh, serial communication, it's not really easy to know which one of the ports that is. Easiest way is probably to see which port are there, ports are there already. Just then do the pairing and then see what new ports have appeared. Um, but uh, if uh, that doesn't work, you can always just uh, try every single one. So after that, we go into Pinpoint APRS and in, in the Tools menu, we find Options and TNC. And uh, even though this is uh, Bluetooth, we need to select Serial Kiss mode because uh, this is Serial over Bluetooth. And here you get to decide which uh, COM port, which serial port to use. I know for a fact that this is COM6. You'll have to figure that out uh, for yourself, sadly. Every other value here you can leave as uh, is. I think I prefer to set flow control to none. Uh, so if, you, uh, if that's uh, set to uh, hardware or any of the other options, then please just put it to none. It's probably the easiest thing. That should be it. Uh, all the settings you need to make for the TNC. Under the APRS tab, you need to put in your uh, call sign and uh, select a, uh, an icon and uh, a position text and other things. You can, uh, can play around with them. Um, that is, uh, should be everything needed to set up uh, Pinpoint APRS. So let's see if uh, we can manage to connect to the radio. You do that by going to the tools menu again and connect TNC. And uh, yeah, I can see we actually received something. We have a Lima Alpha 3 a Romeo Papa Alpha dash seven. That's, uh, that's good to know. That means we are actually receiving data. That's very nice. So I'm gonna let uh, the map populate for a bit and uh, we can uh, talk about what you can see on here and uh, all the interesting things you can do. So I'll be back in a little bit once uh, that's been running for a while and we can see and look at all the symbols we uh, get on the map. It's been a few minutes. We've had uh, some time to collect some uh, over-the-air APRS uh, messages and we can have a look at uh, the map. And I think this should show uh, fairly well why this is a powerful tool when you try to get an operational overview of what's going on in an area. This is a fairly big area. I guess uh, from, uh, from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen, we are talking about about 200 kilometers and the width of the screen is maybe around 300 kilometers. So it's a fairly large area. But still, we got uh, many um, incoming packets. Most of them probably not directly, but uh, at least some of them uh, came uh, uh, directly over RF. Some came via, via digipeters. Um, I'm not connected to the internet with anything here, so everything I receive is, um, is coming in over RF, which uh, I think is pretty cool. So have a let's uh, have a little look and see what we can uh, find around us. Uh, we have the Lima. Delta 1 Foxtrot Alpha, which is uh, probably a digipeter in uh, Fredrikstad. Uh, Lima Delta 3 Hotel Vector, which I know is a digipeter in uh, Holmestrand. We have uh, Lima Delta 3 Juliet Sierra, which we saw the last time as well. That's the U-shape uh, digipeter. Lima Delta 3 Sierra Kilo, which uh, I think is uh, the digipeter on uh, Vealus in uh, Xi'an. And all the way down in... Uh, 
til Lederstrand, Lima Delta for Victor Sierra. Uh, lots of Digipeters, uh, another one, Lima Delta 3 Delta November, which is a Digipeter in Drammen. And uh, let's see up here, we, there's uh, a lot of things going on in uh, Oslo, uh, we could zoom in on that. And uh, yeah, let's have a little look, see what's, what's going on in and around Oslo. There's at least two uh, sailboats, Lima Alpha 3 Sierra Tango Dash 8 and uh, Lima Alpha 7 Delta Hotel Alpha Dash 8, which is uh, very cool. Um, let's zoom back out and see what we can see. Uh, there is another weather station. This is uh, not really far from uh, Gastatoppen, which is uh, one of the highest uh, summits in uh, southern Norway. And let's see, there's a weather station, Lima Alpha 3 Sulu Alpha Dash 3. Uh, there's a couple of cars, Lima Alpha 3 Romeo Papa Alpha Dash 7 and uh, Lima Alpha 1 Delta Sierra Alpha Dash 9. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's an overview from the map's point of view. We also, in this application, have a, uh, a last heard um, list. And we can see here what we've heard over the radio. There's all the position reports. You can see there are all the position reports we've uh, received over RF. There's also what's called miscellaneous reports, which is probably reports about, uh, about uh, repeaters. So if we open up one of these, let's close, uh, close this one and have a look. Yeah, you can see this is about Lima Alpha 9 November Romeo. That's the local uh, seven centimeter repeaters uh, to me. And it uh, tells you the frequency, the uh, shift and the tone needed to open it. So if you're in an area where you, you're not really sure what repeaters exist, you might be able to just listen for a while to APRS with an application like this, and it's gonna tell you what repeaters are within reach. Let's see what this is. This is, um, this is someone running another piece of software. Uh, UI view 32. I've uh, I haven't looked at that. I might uh, might do a video on that in the future if it turns out to be cool. And uh, lastly, let's see. This is Lima Delta One. Okay. The reason it popped up to the top there is because uh, we got a new packet from that um, that station. And uh, every time we get a new packet, it will hop, uh, jump to the top of uh, the list. So let's see what this is. This is Lima Delta One Foxtrot Alpha. It says, and uh, yeah, it seems to be advertising a, uh, a repeater on uh, 145250 with a tone of 100. And uh, no, this is not a repeater. This is someone, uh, this is someone uh, advertising their simplex frequency with a tone of 100, but no offset. So this is a sim uh, simplex uh, frequency. This is uh, Lima Alpha 7 Quebec Romeo dash one. Uh, probably just uh, letting uh, everyone knows that he is listening on the 145.250. This is also another very nice thing about APRS. You can uh, just set it to beacon uh, the frequency you're listening on, and uh, anyone around you that will uh, are listening for APRS will uh, be able to uh, know the frequency you're listening on if there's an offset in use and if there's a tone needed to uh, to contact you. So once again, very nice if you need to get an operational overview or if you're in an area where you really don't know what's going on. Lastly, we'll look at the weather report. I think this is the same uh, weather station we looked at the last time I was uh, explaining this with the iPhone app, but uh, we can have a look. It's probably not because uh, this is a lot less information. It says uh, temperature 60 Fahrenheit. That's not really useful for me, but uh, I'm sure someone can uh, translate that. So if you know what uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit is in old money, then uh, please <laughs> leave a comment or I can look it up when I get home, of course. I'll, uh, I'll do that, I'll try and do a screen overlay. You can also send messages. So I will try to, uh, the user interface uh, is a bit suboptimal, I would say. You can't right click on messages. You have to right click on inbox for the new message and dialogue. We'll try to send a message to Lima Bravo 5 Juliet Juliet dash nine. That's uh, for my cell phone. That's uh, always connected via APRS IS, the APRS internet system. And uh, at times uh, when it's convenient, it's also connected via RF. Uh, at cur currently, it's only connected via the uh, APRS IS, but we should be able to get a message through to that uh, cell phone. So let's see. All right, you there. We will ask, and this will be sent out over RF. This is not sent out over the internet, over the internet in any way. Let's see. And uh, yeah. That uh, worked quite nice. Let's see. 
it uh, turned up on my cell phone and uh, I'll try and uh, reply. Yes, I am. And we will send that uh, over the network. Sending that back. And we'll see if that uh, turns up here. If it does, it's going to show up in my inbox. And uh, I believe it did. Yes, I am, it says. So this is how you can do APRS messaging in a little more, uh, let's say, user-friendly way with a keyboard and a nicer, bigger screen than having to do it on the front panel of the uh, radio. And uh, that was APRS on Windows with the Pinpoint APRS application, running the uh, Vero VGC VRN76 uh, radio. That's uh, all I have for you today. If uh, you like this sort of video, then uh, please uh, consider subscribing. I create uh, videos on many different topics having to do with ham radio and uh, other non-ham radio related uh, radio topics. If you uh, like this video in particular, please consider giving me a thumbs up if you think I should have done something different or have other ideas for things I could uh, test. Please leave a comment uh, below. And uh, other than that, until next time, 7-3.